Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to cover the QQQ for the week of August 9th, 2021. If you don't know, it's essentially the NASDAQ 100. Uh, all the biggies, AMD, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all the ones that make the high-tech movements. Uh, apologize for missing last week. We're actually on vacation and uh, back out of this week. So let's just jump into it. First thing first, earnings scoreboard. So this accounts for the, the week previous to July 26th. We predicted Lamb Research would knock it out of the park to having their year end was going to do very well and they did uh, they crushed their earnings they're up five percent over five percent for the month doing well continue to expect them growth although they've raised in price 35 dollars since uh, we talked about them but um, not too much more to grow but land research a lot of growth uh, general growth going in the future so good things coming from land research uh, so far, we're 21 and now since we've been talking about this since March 21st, we post all our results and our weekly updates at preptorgrow.com slash QQQ. So check it out. This is where we post the slides, earnings announcements, and that kind of stuff. So let's talk about last week. So on the July 26th, we predicted that early August would start uh, uh, an early, uh, small bull, uh, but nevertheless a bull. So uh, since then, it's been up 1%. Year to date, the QQQ is up 17.3%, which is awesome. Very happy with that growth at Prep to Grow. Um, our predictions for coming up is up 54%, so quite a big a jump, jump over the last couple of weeks, but then um, went down week over week. So um, this is essentially two weeks of history, but uh, still good growth for our projections going over the next 12 to 18 months from today. So next year, this time, it should be up 54%. Analyst forecasts, they're projecting it should be up 29% around the same time. Uh, but like us, uh, they've downgraded it a little bit week over week. Last week was 32 for the analyst. This week is 29%. Analysts, we look at really their earning per share guidance, and that's what that number reflects. So good stuff. Bull last week, up 1%. Good year for the Qs. Some housekeeping, Prep to Grow is doing a funding round. Um, we just started it. Uh, we're up about 115K. Um, this has been one, essentially 100% driven from our customers and our subscribers, so very excited about the support. Hoping to do funding outside of just our core customer group and subscriber. So if you're interested, love to have you become part of Prep to Grow and be part of uh, part owner and part of the founding team. So love for you to participate in this. So let's talk about what's going to happen this week. Bull. Bull, bull, bull. It's going to be a good, should be a good week. Not a lot of earnings. A lot of volume really shifting towards uh, more of a bull market. Um, we do see later in the month a bit of a transition to flat. Uh, but right now we're still in about a two-week bull, two, three-week bull period. Um, this week will be bull. Next week, um, the week of the 16th, is when we're really projecting it to kind of go into flat. Although there's some great announcements coming up on the week of August 16th, like NVIDIA. So the reasonings, uh, the Qs are crushing it, their growth. The companies that make up the Qs are growing very well, and it's just not FANG growth. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we are talking about how only the FANGs were growing, and the Qs were, the rest of the Qs are kind of petering out, which was going to be a big concern. However, when it comes to the Q's pricing, really it's driven by 15 companies that make up about 65% of the total uh, holdings for them. So if they move jointly, they all move. Um, but it's good to see that the growth is now happening outside of the FANG Plus, which makes it more strong and stable for the long run. Not a lot of pullback, which is why prep to grow algorithms have upped the, the projections of that growth. Other things going on, job growth is looking really good. Um, there's openings. We'd like to see more openings, uh, specifically around the travel industry, international travel, business travel, that kind of stuff. Those things still haven't opened up. So you know, the growth and the openings will be a little bit muted until that happens. But nevertheless, things are opening. Things are looking good uh, on that front. Front. Some things to be cautious or concerned about, end of earnings. Um Usually uh, a little bit of a flat period, but we're not seeing that. So certainly still projecting a bull or algorithms are. The last is the macro conditions, conditions, stimulus ending, unemployment uh, peak 
uh, unemployment benefits ending in September. Uh, there were some things around a moratorium on evictions, which is good. But again, we should be concerned about all those stimulus benefits ending and what that will happen. That's really when we'll see what the the true economy is versus the the hype of the economy over the last you know year now. So let's look at just bull versus bear. So since May, we've been pretty accurate, except for July, we expected a, a pullback, and that never happened. Uh, we did see, as predicted two weeks ago, an early August bull, and that's occurring up over one percent in the first week of August. So that's great. Expecting it to continue through. This week, so let's talk about who's announcing. Um, this just two covers we covered on the left on July 26, where all of them announced again. A lot of these folks did solid, solid earnings. This week, August 9th, there's really one notable, which is Cisco Systems, and there's a lot of unusual option activity, AMD and Mastercard. But let's just jump into it and see um, what the next week's going to look like for these three. If you haven't seen this, this is Prep to Grow's portfolio. So this is currently open to everybody in beta. If you're interested, you can jump in into it now and and get uh, a 10 recommendation portfolio for you for free for the next 30 days, consisting of all options or all stocks and everything in between, depending on your risk level. Um, over the last, what is it? Um, since August 12th or August 2nd, um, we're up about six grand. Well, that can't be right. Um, so, well, it's in beta, so you know, you're gonna run into a bug. But really, it was since May 15th, uh, we reset beta, and I think that reset the date, so I apologize for that. But since May 15th, um, we're up about 24%, six grand. We've had 21 wins, no losses. Average return per trade is 15% over 18 days. So. We've done very well. In fact, uh, most of the, the money that we've earned from this goes straight into paying our Indian development teams to build a portfolio for us. So let's just jump into the three that we talked about. Let's cover Cisco first. Um, Cisco Systems, let's just jump into it. So we don't recommend anything going into an earnings week, um, yellow no Cisco. Um, let, when I say let alone, Cisco is about only a 4%. Um, drop in price, um, which typically means from an option perspective, you're not going to get a big return. So we typically avoid that. Uh, but Cisco Systems, this recommendation is from August 9th, 2021. Uh, they're announcing their Q4 and fiscal year end. Uh, their earnings date is August 10th, 2021. Um, for background, I grew up at Cisco essentially, spent my first real five years of technical uh, product at Cisco System, loved it. Uh, built e-commerce solutions, built uh, staffing solutions. Really enjoyed my time at Cisco. They're based in Santa Clara or the Bay Area, or the really the heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, in the '90s, when I was there, we grew from 3,000 to 45,000, and they were kind of the diva, the Facebook of that period of time. Certainly not now. 20 years later, um, not quite what it was. So let's talk about them. Um, over last year, the analyst growth expectations was about 12% from earnings per share in a stock perspective. Um, their actual stock price has gone up 24% last year. In the last month, up 5%. Um, so you would assume they're, they're doing well for the year, expecting that they're going to continue to go through and uh, end the year well. Unfortunately, uh, what we have seen is that while they get got through Q3 well, and we're looking at all-time growth, um, their growth just cratered um, right after Q3 announcement. So what we saw is that they actually dropped in corporate growth by 87%, uh, which is a mammoth growth. Um, usually that means they're doing layoffs in conjunction to that um, crash. We heard there was some layoffs. Uh, there's some announcements around that. Um, the second piece of that is when it's craters that much, either one or two things are happening. One, they're going to make a, a massive acquisition, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for Cisco. However, there's been no announcements in the last three months related to that. So the algorithms now give that a, an exceptionally low probability of occurrence. The higher probability is that they're in trouble. Their Q4 is going to be exceptionally problematic and their future growth is going to be exceptionally problematic 
as well. We're pretty accurate at predicting a five day and a 30 day success. Usually for options, they're like 95%, but for options, or excuse me, for stocks, this is accurate. And if you short stocks, this is very accurate. Um, but this is a this is uh, an option, so you know just be aware that 95% is our standard for recommending options. So we're not quite there to make it a recommendation. But again, it's high probability Cisco's in trouble. Q4 and future guidance uh, may be at risk. Um, we have not seen any unusual option activity for them at all, which is uh, surprising, especially with the cratering of growth in June, July, usually there's something. Uh, there is a ton of open interest on it, but nobody's biting on it. So we haven't seen a lot of a lot of unusual, we actually haven't seen any unusual option activity in the last two weeks leading into this. If you look at their technicals, um, you know, again, they're up about 10, 12% over the last 200 days. Um, we think they have a bad earnings announcement, kind of like they did last year at this time when they were at $39 uh, price point. Uh, they could go back to that. Um, I'm hopeful um, that it's an acquisition and that may come out because I love Cisco, grew up at Cisco, felt it was a great company, great leadership, smart folks. However, we give that a little probability at this point. So let's talk about the two others that have unusual option activity. MasterCard and AMD, uh, we have a very high success rate for MasterCard at a 97%. Unusual option activity here is 50, over 50, which is uh, a, a lot of option activity. Um, so this was uh, on the 4th where the volume was at uh, over 50. Um, typically, if we see, again, less than a 2% gain, we don't recommend it at all. And so... This doesn't get updated since that date because it's just not worth this to uh, put this out there and have people take a look at it because there's such a low gain to this. Have a very high success rate on the five day and the 30 day. If this was a higher gain price, we'd, we'd buy it all day long, but it's not. Um, but a ton of open interest rate uh, uh, volume to open interest rate for this. Uh, we agree with it. MasterCard is at an all-time growth rate in the last 12 months. They're doing exceptionally well. Uh, they announced in October. Um, I would say MasterCard, yeah. Um, whoever bought this much has is, is done a big play. This is for the October, November 19, 2021, or about a month after the earnings date. So must be doing good and like we're projecting. Uh, this is a pretty high trade cost at uh, $2,000 per share. Again, this is for November 19, 2021 at the 375 strike price. Pretty expensive. Um, MasterCard hasn't had too much growth over the last 200 days, but our algorithm seeing that it's an all-time growth, so worth a look. AMD, somebody bought a lot of put volume on AMD. Um, typically, when something's greater than 20% stock price change, we tend to ignore just because we, fe we feel that the algorithms pick something up and may be anomalous and may need a couple days to settle down. Um, but these guys had an 18 uh, volume to open interest rate ratio, uh, which is very high as well. Um, you know, over 3,000 shares, it looks like. Uh, for the, uh, well, again, November 19, 2021, expiration date at the 97.50 strike price. Um, not too bad, 45. Um, this is a put. Um, we're not too great at picking puts for AMD. Much better calls, 84%. Not Again, doesn't fit our sweet spot. We're about 95% for options. And we do recommend this. And I agree with the algorithms not recommending this. AMD is at an all-time growth. We look at their stock. You know, it's, it's jumped quite a bit. We've talked about AMD going into the markets about how it was very suppressed and it bounced. You know, coming out of earnings like we projected and somebody's expecting it to pull back. I don't see it, algorithms don't see it. We projected that it was underpriced and was gonna bounce. It did exactly that um, going into earnings. So um, yeah, don't agree with this put call at all, um, but we'll see what happens. Let's jump in and finish off the week. But again, those are the three. So the three, Cisco, oh, trouble, looks like it's a trouble. 
very cautious. Um, should look at puts and short on, on Cisco based upon what we're seeing. As usual, option activity, again, AMD. Uh, I disagree with their put option activity for the, what was it, the 11, 19, 2020, 20, excuse me, 2021 uh, expiration date at the 97 strike price. MasterCard, agree with that. A lot of uh, 50, 50 is a lot of, uh, a lot of option to, uh, excuse me, volume to open interest rate. Agree with that. Again, uh, November 19, 2021 expiration at the 375 strike price. So should be not too big of an earnings week, but um, a lot of mutual objectivity that will play out. We appreciate your time. As always, everything we talk about here is based upon Preptico's recommendations from our algorithms, our big data and AI solutions. Um, and we're not financial analysts. This is you know what the data tells us based upon the analysis of millions of data points on a daily basis. We'd love for you to check us out. Just go to prep2grow.com. Again, we're doing betas for our portfolio. Excited about that. And um, we're looking for investors. So if you're interested in becoming a part owner and part of the founding team as part of prep to grow we'll love for you to take a look at us. But if not, hope you have a great week of, of trading and we'll talk to you next week. Take care.